This rock here shows a bit of the epidote mineralization that happens in these pieces here. What we have is a piece of very old basalt. We've got a little bit of chlorite forming in pockets as it just begins to metamorphose. But uh, over here, suddenly we have this epidote here. And the whole rock has just been altered to epidote. We see that it hasn't affected the whole rock, obviously, just this one little area. And it's where the, it's what you're seeing is the fluid pathways. What you're seeing is where the, the hydrothermal fluids were passing through and altering the rock. So no fluids passing through here to speak of really, but over in here, there may have been perhaps this crack along here was a weak zone that the fluids were able to travel through. And you have that epidote forming. This piece is kind of large. We have green epidote. We also got green chlorite here. And it's nice to see the two different green minerals contrasting with each other so that you can get a good look at the difference in color. You have this lighter green epidote here. And the darker green chlorite. There's a, definitely a difference in uh, texture as well. The chlorite is much softer than the epidote. You can sometimes see orientation, almost like shapes in the chlorite. Often that's due to some slippage. Sometimes there's shearing involved. I often tell people that metamorphic greenstones are altered basalt. You can see exactly what's happening in this piece here. Look at that clear amygdaloidal basalt on the top. Early greenstone alteration on the bottom. Fluid pathways are what allow that transition to happen. And here, fluids could access it and alter it. Here, for whatever reason, they couldn't. Probably has something to do with these cracks right along here.